Welcome to the course on design of power electronic converters. We will be discussing magnetics design. So, let us now look into the different magnetic materials that are used for making your magnetic cores. So, the materials which are used for making magnetic, uh, magnetic cores are basically your ferromagnetic elements and uh, these are the main ferromagnetic ele elements iron, cobalt, nickel and uh, gadolina. And their combinations are many times used to make what are called as the soft magnetic materials. So, soft magnetic materials mainly are of uh, four types your steel based and uh, second is your iron alloys. Apart from that there are ferrites and then there is amorphous uh, material which can be of metallic glass type or nanocrystalline type. So, your uh, permeability range is shown here for iron alloys this is the permeability range. Uh, and then for ferrites and amorphous it is shown here. So, you can see that that uh, amorphous materials have uh, relatively much higher permeability range as compared to your iron alloys and ferrites. When now uh, we want to select a magnetic material for a particular power electronic application, then uh, uh, we have to see whether the material that we are choosing whether it is suitable for the frequency of operation or not. Now, this table shows the frequency range of magnetic materials. You can see here that iron alloys are uh, their frequency range is relatively lesser your 50 to 3000 hertz that means 3 kilohertz is, uh, a, is the frequency range in which your iron alloys can be used. For example, your CRG or cold roll gain oriented steel you might have heard about it uh, is what is used in your 50 hertz power transformers. And uh, then your other which is nickel iron alloys or cobalt iron alloys uh, their uh, frequency range is uh, relatively higher. Further as you go to nanocrystalline and amorphous alloys their frequency range is also good it is up nanocrystalline materials can be used up to 150 kilohertz and amorphous alloys can be used to about 250 kilohertz. Then comes your ferrites, ferrites the frequency range your uh, manganese zinc ferrites their frequency range is also good up to about 2 megahertz they can be used and uh, iron powders and your nickel zinc based ferrites their frequency range is even higher they can be used up to about 100 megahertz. So, the important parameters that, uh, um, that you should be looking into when you select a magnetic material those are given here. One is your this uh, high relative permeability, the relative permeability of the material should be very high as high as possible. Then the saturation flux density, uh, it is desirable to have high saturation flux density. The low coercivity at C because uh, coercivity is uh, something uh, is what is required the coercive force to make the magnetic field uh, flux density equal to 0. So, this gives your H C. So, this is your uh, B H curve. So, this part is your coercivity and this part is your uh, residual flux can call it as the BR. So, this should be as uh, low as possible the HC value. Then high electrical resistivity rho C. Now, why electrical resistivity is important? This uh, we have discussed before about eddy currents. So, whenever we choose a magnetic core uh, then there will be eddy currents in it and uh, they should be as less as possible. So, one of the ways of reducing eddy currents is by laminations, but not all materials sup may support uh, formation of laminations because they may be brittle material laminations cannot be formed. Apart uh, from that uh, your uh, the stacking of the lamination is uh, also a problem. So, it is better to have uh, solid cores, but then for that your resistivity 
of the material should be high so that the eddy currents that are produced would be less. Then high Curie temperature. Now, what is this Curie temperature? It is the temperature at which uh, uh, the uh, magnetism is lost. Uh, this is a very rough definition. Uh, there are more precise definition, but for our purpose, for simplicity, just understand that that Curie temperature should be very high. The higher it is, uh, the more is the ability of the material to withstand your uh, temperature. A low hysteresis and eddy current losses per unit volume PV. So, the loss that is going to take place, the core loss that should be low and per unit volume loss this uh, uh, parameter is provided by the manufacturer of these magnetic materials. And so, you should look into it that this PV value, the core loss value per unit volume should be as low as possible. Then uh, your high upper operating frequency range. So, if uh, you have a very high uh, frequency range up to which this the material can be used, so then that is uh, very good you can use it for wider frequency ranges. But however, depending on your particular requirement of frequency you should be looking into whether the material can be used for those ranges of frequencies or not. This is a table which shows the properties of uh, these iron based uh, soft magnetic materials mainly your iron silicon, then nickel iron and powdered iron and carbonyl iron. And uh, but they have their own composition here it is given for 3 to 6 percent of silicon and this nickel iron again can be made in different compositions. So, that is uh, given for 3 compositions over here in this table. Then powdered iron composition and then your carbonyl iron. So, first is your permeability which is very very important it should be as high as possible. So, if you see here carbonyl iron's permeability is uh, much lesser and uh, as we go to powdered iron it increases then for nickel iron it is uh, further high and it depends on the composition of uh, your uh, of the material that is being used and then further your iron silicon uh, this material has this very good permeability range of 1000 to 10000. Then B peak that means your saturation flux density if you see here uh, then uh, the highest that we see here is 1.9 and nickel iron for your isoperm 50 percent nickel there also you see the saturation flux density is quite good it is about 1.6 and carbonyl iron also has good saturation flux density. Then further your resistivity it should be as high as possible. Now, here you see all of these have lower resistivities whereas, uh, this one carbonyl iron this has got very good resistivity. Then P loss this should be as low as possible. And here if you compare it you can see here that uh, this uh, iron silicon is what which has very low P loss. And of course, this is measured at a particular flux density so 1.5 tesla and for a particular frequency which is your 50 hertz. And this material is iron silicon which is specially used for your 50 hertz power transformer applications. Then your Curie temperature. Curie temperature should be as high as possible. So, here you can see that that iron silicon and your carbonyl iron these two have uh, got very good uh, Curie temperature and your powdered iron also has uh, very high Curie temperature. Now, uh, similar data is uh, given here for ferrites, amorphous and nanocrystalline material. So, Ferrites, uh, your in they come in different composition, manganese, zinc, uh, different uh, elements may be used there. And amorphous, again, they can also be manufactured using different elements and different compositions. So, this is uh, what is given here for this composition 73.5 percent iron. Then uh, this one is for 70 to 73 percent of cobalt and then nanocrystalline material the uh, composition there here it is used consists of 73.5 to 90 percent of iron. 
So, permeability range if you see all of these have very good permeability ok. Your nano crystalline has very high permeability. Then saturation flux density if you see saturation flux density of uh, your ferrites is relatively less. So, although it can be used for very high frequencies, but uh, the problem is that, that it you, you cannot push lot of flux density through it. So, you cannot use it for very high power applications. Whereas, uh, if you see here nano crystalline material, it can be used for relatively higher switching frequencies, uh, I mean in the range of 100, 100 kilohertz uh, uh, and uh, the flux density is also good. It is about 1.2 to 1.5 which is uh, close to uh, what we see for iron silicon material. Then resistivity if you see here ferrites have very good resistivity, very high resistivity and uh, these other materials have relatively have much smaller resistivities. Then P loss the uh, core loss that is going to take place per unit uh, uh, I mean this is watts per kg in terms of that this P loss uh, data is given. So, here you see here nano crystalline has a relatively lesser uh, your P loss as compared to others. In Curie temperature also if you see nano crystalline has got the highest Curie temperature. So, uh, these are the important parameters that you should be looking for and then you can compare that which material is going to be more suitable for uh, your design of inductors and transformers. Now, depending on the material your BH curves can look to be very different. There are different manufacturers of magnetic materials and uh, they make the magnetic materials from different uh, composition of different elements. And based on it your BH curve also that is obtained is different. Now, here uh, this is uh, this material vitroperm 500F ok, this is uh, the name of that material and this has this composition 73.5 percent iron. 15.5 percent silicon and 1 percent copper. So, the BH curve that you obtain is is like this and uh, this here this is expressed in uh, Oersted's this is actually the CGS unit of um, your H magnetic field intensity and uh, then your amorphous uh, 2605SE this is another magnetic material and here this BH curve is given. And you can see here that this uh, BH curve is uh, appears to be very different as compared to this one. Here your residual flux is much higher flux density uh, although the coercivity is lesser. Whereas, in this case both the residual flux and coercivity are very small. Then uh, these are BH curves for your L material and P and R material you can see that the BH curve shape is again very different. So, here these are given for two temperatures for 25 degree C and 100 degree C. Now, this for L material you can see that the BH curve is very thin the width of it is very thin whereas, here you can see that that this for P and R material they here this uh, BH curve is thicker the width of it is higher. So, uh, this is just to give you an idea the different materials will have different BH curves and so you can look into them for uh, uh, your knowledge. This is uh, the uh, data that is shown for your uh, ferrite materials different ferrite materials. Now, there is a manufacturer named uh, magnetics of uh, your uh, soft magnetic materials and uh, they develop uh, these ferrite materials and they have given different names to the different ferrite materials and these have uh, slightly different uh, compositions in them. So, there are differences among them. So, that is the data that is shown. So, it is named as L, R, P, T, F and W that is the uh, notation that is given to identify the material. So, you can see here the permeability. So, the best permeability is obtained for uh, this ferrite material W 
and then the saturation flux density it is uh, more or less the same, but is uh, relatively higher for your P and R materials. And uh, residual flux uh, you can see here that uh, is uh, lowest for this W. Curie temperature um, again they also vary this L material has got the uh, highest Curie temperature. Then coercivity. Uh, again you can see here that uh, lesser coercivity is uh, for this uh, W. And the density is also provided, no, density is uh, the same for all of them, but density is also something you should uh, be paying attention to because uh, uh, if the density, uh, it is the density which decides that how much volume you will be needing for a particular amount of weight of that material. So, we do not want very heavy and as at the same time we do not want it the size to increase. Then uh, when we discussed uh, your uh, core loss calculations at that time I told you that uh, uh, these coefficients are important. So, uh, you may recall that your uh, this core loss per unit volume was uh, given as your k f power m b m power n. So, this uh, k m and n these are empirical coefficients which uh, uh, you have uh, to note down to do the calculation of your core loss. So, those data are provided by the manufacturer of the materials. You can see here this is for the same uh, ferrite materials which are manufactured uh, by your uh, magnetics. So, their frequency range is uh, given and also the values of k, m and n those three coefficients are provided by them. There are different manufacturers of these magnetic materials and uh, the uh, well known manufacturers uh, here it is listed your magnetics, ferrox cube, ferri, epcos, tdk and so forth. And uh, they all make uh, different different magnetic materials but there are some similarities uh, among them. I mean you can categorize them as which are the similar magnetic materials. So, that, 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 that is easy for you to choose that if suppose you are not able to get uh, the magnetic material of one manufacturer, similar magnetic material from other manufacturer you can obtain. So, that is what uh, this table is uh, showing, but note that the material may be similar. Uh, but their part numbers are or their uh, designation the, the way in which they are denoted are different or identified are different. Now, here you can see this is by magnetics, magnetics ferrite materials are denoted like this L, R, P, F, J, W and so forth and this by ferrox cube uh, they like to give uh, this uh, number 3 before that and then 3 F 45, 3 F 3, 3 C 94 and, and so forth. And uh, here you can see that, that these the permeabilities are given. So, for L and 3F45 the permeability is the same. Similarly, uh, these are the uh, magnetic materials with uh, different names, uh, but uh, uh, similar permeabilities are uh, 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 given here in this column. And similarly, for other similar materials also by different manufacturers are listed here for different different permeabilities. So, uh, this is for uh, your information that when you choose a magnetic material you can to choose uh, uh, from any manufacturer and if you do not get that you can use uh, another manufacturer, but the part number will be different, but they have similar materials available. So, what are the key points of uh, this lecture? So, your ferromagnetic materials are what are used for your magnetic design and uh, what are the important parameters? Your permeability, saturation flux density, coercivity, core loss density, resistivity, frequency and Curie temperature. And uh, similar magnetic materials with uh, little differences are produced by different manufacturers. And uh, so, looking on the parameters, you can select which is the magnetic material which is going to be suitable 
for your application. Thank you.